I would like to tell you all a tale. You may be having conversations with your family now about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial that make no sense. You may be having coworkers telling you an indiscriminate murderer of minorities is walking free or Facebook pages spamming rage all over your timeline about how a white supremacist court system is excusing an actual mass shooting with a machine gun because it was done by a white man. This perspective is clearly batshit insane, but it's not entirely your friends, families, or these bizarro Facebook pages' fault for repeating this moronic nonsense. Truth is, they probably outsource their thinking to those who claim to be experts on subjects of politics and law. It is asterisk, but understandable mistake. So if you're wondering just how they came to these conclusions, what advice and information they are being given, well, I figured it would be a worthwhile thought experiment to compile the story of Kyle Rittenhouse as progressives understand it. And so that I won't get criticism for just pulling out random quotes from crazies, of which there are plenty on the left and the right, I have decided to use entirely verified sources, people who have a check mark for being influential politicians, member of media, professors, actors, people who actually have sway in society. So I hope you're sitting down with a strong drink because we are about to go on a wild adventure into a land of absurdity and mystery, as told entirely by Twitter blue check marks, which I will show on screen just in case you suspect I am overhyping how ludicrous their interpretation of events is. But first, a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Noble Gold. Now, not everyone is interested in precious metal IRAs or 401k rollovers. Some people are happily putting their life savings on the stock market or launching themselves into property investment. Others like the idea of cryptos or leveraged investments, all at what looks like the top of the market. What could possibly go wrong? Well, with the supply chain issues, inflation on the way, and unemployment climbing, isn't it all a bit risky? And don't even get me started on the $25 trillion of debt. If you've been thinking about investing safer so you can retire comfortably and sleep at night, it might be time to talk to Noble Gold about the tax advantages and other pluses of those precious metal IRAs. Of course, you might just love uncertainty, but if you don't, this month Noble Gold are giving away a free America the Beautiful solid silver 5-ounce coin with any qualifying IRA you start. Call them at 877-646-5347 or visit their website at noblegoldinvestments.com. And now, without further ado, let us tell the tale of Kyle Rittenhouse as it was experienced in the parallel universe that progressives inhabit. I write to you on a day of great horror. November 19th, 2021. The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid isle of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in their own direction, have hitherto harmed us little. Unless, of course, we are black, female, or queer. But someday, The piercing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such frightful vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace of a new safe space. Critical theorists have guessed at the awesome grandeur of the cosmic cycle wherein our world and socially constructed humanity form transient incidents. They have hinted at strange survivals of white supremacy in terms which would freeze the blood if not masked by bland optimism. But it is not from them that there came the single glimpse of forbidden eons which chills me when I think of it and maddens me when I dream of it. That glimpse, like all dread glimpses of truth, flashed out from a fiery but mostly peaceful night in Kenosha. Wisconsin. Men, women, and every gender in between and beyond were marching to defend black lives in America, a country in which it is entirely legal to shoot anyone who is less than 99.8% white. 
Activists in Kenosha marched long and hard through the cold night, only disturbing the peace to light small fires to warm their cold and weary hands. The peaceful protesters, all of whom were black, were blissfully unaware that they were being stalked by a predator. A member of the Hitler Youth, a vowed white supremacist and domestic terrorist, carrying an illegally obtained weapon of war that he was too young to be in possession of, and worst of all, had carried across state lines. Kyle Howard Rittenhouse. His mother dropped him off with a snack bag and some extra ammo tucked into his backpack after their road trip to Kenosha from Illinois, a long but deliberate trip for what they perceived as good hunting grounds. As Kyle exited the panzer tank they called a car, he turned to his mother and said, We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white-owned car lots. As we all know, property is only something white people own. He then sprinted off into the darkness to find his victims. Rittenhouse scoured the streets, knowing he had total immunity from the police and the power of life and death over any victim he chose. The one-man militia finally found his targets, crouched down on one knee to hide and looked through the scope of his big-ass machine gun. He then opened fire on the innocent protesters without mercy, an act of blatant terrorism. However, good men do not sit and do nothing in the face of evil, and these protesters Kyle was facing off with were the greatest men this country had ever seen. Joseph Rosenbaum, known endearingly by everyone as Jojo, a father who loved children and had his whole life ahead of him, chased the KKK Grand Wizard down the street. Earlier that day, Rosenbaum had in fact said the N-word, and asked to be shot, but as a black man, this was entirely acceptable for him to do. His community knew him as a sweet, loving man against violence and vandalism, a man of peace. Rittenhouse hated that peace, stirring up the collective violence fantasies of every Republican in the country. Rittenhouse turned and assassinated Joseph Rosenbaum in cold blood, who had suddenly stopped chasing him and turned to face the other way, allowing Kyle to shoot him in the back without warning. Next, a hero known only as Jump Kick Man flew into the air with one foot out to smash the jaw of the active shooter. However, he was not successful. Kyle, radiating the energy of the Columbine shooters, continued firing into the crowd of protesters, but another stepped up to fight for justice. Anthony Huber launched himself at the white supremacist to protect those near and dear to him, and did his best to apprehend the man using his skateboard as handcuffs. With intense courage he fought, but tragically the hope and love of Huber was no match for Rittenhouse's machine gun. The monster turned to look at Huber and unloaded his AK-47 into the innocent man. But even after this second murder, somehow Kyle's bloodlust was not satiated. Thank goodness paramedic Gage Grosskreutz was determined to stop this mass shooting. Unarmed, he bravely pointed his finger at Rittenhouse and told him to stop in a stern tone. Rittenhouse, being the cowardly villain that he is, decided to bring a gun during a fist fight and vaporized Grosskreutz's bicep. Kyle, finally satisfied with his carnage, took a stroll towards the police, who had been watching the shooting in awe. In fact, they were waiting, their hands up for high fives with bottles of water ready after Kyle's hard day of murder. The world was aghast at what they had just witnessed. There was absolutely no legal explanation for why Rittenhouse was not arrested and stopped immediately by police for his crimes. Worse, acting president Donald Trump refused to condemn the white nationalist who murdered two people in cold blood simply because Kyle had attended one of his rallies.
Even the current president, Joe Biden, called out this disgusting defense of white supremacy. But when all seemed lost, Kyle did eventually get dragged in front of the courts. We didn't get our hopes up. As we knew, this was a court system broken and evil, known to only protect members of fascistic militias, especially when they are trying to kill protesters against white supremacy. But even in that court system, Kyle Rittenhouse did something risky. He took the stand in his own defense, and at first, this testimony seemed to go so obviously against him that even the jury had to see the monster before them. Behind you stands a symbol of oppression where a thousand men have languished under the name of this man. Jacob Blake. You have been supplied with a false idol. We take Kenosha from the corrupt, but start by storming the capital and freeing the oppressed. This great city. It will endure. What could Kyle possibly do to come back from this? Especially considering. Kyle had announced he was not simply partaking in the legal act of shooting minorities, but instead was trying to defend himself, a highly illegal act in America, as highlighted so aptly by the prosecution. You lose the right to self-defense when you're the one who brought the gun. We all held our breath. Was it finally over for this monster Rittenhouse? But alas, it was not. Unfortunately, he had one secret weapon up his sleeve, one act alone which would save him forever. He pretended to cry. We all know there is nothing more powerful than the crocodile tears of a white man in the courts. In fact, merely by crying, white men are able to spread the deadly disease known as affluenza which immunizes other white people against empathy for blacks and is more contagious than COVID. It was only the fact that Officer Derek Chauvin was such a sadist that he literally could not pretend to be sad over murdering the defenseless activist George Floyd that prevented him escaping justice the same way. The jury took three days to deliberate as to whether to let Kyle out. While that might seem like a sign of hesitation, they in fact needed those three days to test his blood to make sure he was in fact 100% pure Bavarian phenotype. When they discovered that he was, they let him out pursuant to paragraph 14, section 88 of the Code of White Racial Justice. As the jury read out their verdict acquitting Rittenhouse of all charges, Kyle just stood there with the eyes of a stone-cold killer. No tears, no relief, no emotion. As the jury said, you're white, you may leave now and shoot more protesters. And so concludes another part of the vicious cycle, whereby white people kill black people and face zero consequences, at which point black people protest, and then white people kill more black people with no accountability. And yet, perhaps we can take some small comfort that in spite of this vicious cycle, there are still black people in America, no doubt, thanks to the heroic efforts of Planned Parenthood to save as many black children as possible. One day, perhaps, those children will finally stand up for their rights. One day, but not now. The end. Okay, on a serious note, minus the Bane posting embellishment, this story was entirely woven by the words of verified journalists, news outlets, academics, state prosecutors, and actual elected politicians. And yet, not one word of it is true. Even down to just simple details like Kyle's mom driving him to Kenosha or his gun being illegal, all the way up to the biggest accusations like that Kyle is a white supremacist who murdered people. Anyone who has said anything to this degree either did not watch the trial at all or is knowingly a partisan hack who I hope Rittenhouse sues for defamation. I did just hear he got off the phone with Nick Sandman. There are a lot of lessons to be learned from this case beyond just the consequences of defamation though. While the horror story I have told you is bad fiction, Imagine it wasn't. 
Imagine all this were true. Who among us would not throw ourselves on the gears of a society that earnestly let all of that take place? Who among us would not lose faith in that society's institutions and seek revolution, violent or otherwise, in order to make the world just make sense again? I would very much like to tell you that the check marks cited in this story are committed communists for whom violent revolution is the goal of all this misinformation, but sadly, most of them are just not that smart. Sure, for the pseudo-academic critical theorist among them, this is certainly about tearing down all institutions and traditions that might seek to deny their irrational prejudices against white people, men, whoever it may be, which they have laundered into faux knowledge under the solipsistic label of lived experiences. But for the majority of these people, this is simply a matter of getting attention. Ratings, clicks, likes, and retweets. Imagine the level of sheer narcissistic irresponsibility it takes to turn huge chunks of the country against their own civilization simply for the sake of better viewership. Truth be damned. In a world where media, academia, and political institutions did their work correctly, your anxious friends and family would have heard the story of Kyle Rittenhouse not as a tale of deceptive self-defense claims that only white murderers can take advantage of. Instead, they would have heard it alongside the story of Andrew Coffey, a young black man who, like Rittenhouse, was charged with murder, claimed self-defense, and found not guilty on the exact same day as Kyle. In many ways, Coffey's story is far more complex than the Rittenhouse case, which even further damns the narrative by progressives that the American justice system only serves to exonerate white people. But sadly, your friends and family will not hear that story, which is why we can't just pass off this misinformation as irresponsible idealists in the ranks. The media, intellectuals, and politicians who partake in these lies are demagogues leading a movement conceived in hate. They seemingly hate private property so much that they think anyone's attempt to preserve it makes that person an aggressor. They seemingly hate white people so much that they would sooner see every accused person locked away with no recourse than allow one man to go free. They seemingly hate family so much that they would rather lock a child in prison than save a child from being assaulted by one of the heroes Kyle shot. And they seemingly hate truth, reason, and evidence so much that they will tear down civilization rather than let their hatred and bigotry be disproved. They chose hate, Kyle Rittenhouse chose survival, and thank God he chose wisely.